Well, um, hi guys, hope you're okay. Um, seems to ease off a bit over here now, and they're going to open some pubs and stuff like that. Whether it's a good idea or not, I don't know, time will tell. Um, supposed to still be social distancing up to a metre now, I believe. But anyway, I hope you're all well. Um, I thought I'd give a little update on the um, TT Nitro four stroke that I've been working on now I, I remember I think you remember in the last video I actually kind of put two bikes in a big pile and made this one out of the two of them because I was never happy with the uh, Novo for our setup with these two side plates and I wanted it all empty underneath like you can see in the picture now with the um, the TT now in my last video I showed you like a sort of dry build uh, and I was quite happy it was coming along quite easy and everything kind of going together well I can tell you I've had quite a few problems with it um, once I started tightening everything up and you know trying to get everything to mesh properly and stuff like that I started to having some uh, major headaches now one of them was the exhaust uh, if you can remember I had the um, the large exhaust on there that came from the uh, two stroke was obviously I've got the four stroke in here and I wanted to use it you know because I like sort of an open pipe on these engines gives it a lot more power but I've been doing the alley soldering and going quite well with it but my conclusion with the alley soldering is it kind of it only sort of lays on the top it doesn't really sort of penetrate the metal and if you have to re-weld it again like what happened to my insoles was where it was bolted through the frame it had like a little crack that appeared on it and i thought i'll just touch that in you know with some weld well it i just couldn't weld it and in the end it just melted and it like just fell to pieces and i've had it a few times now i've tried to repair stuff and sort of tack it back together again but it kind of once you've welded it if you don't get it right first time you try and weld over it again and it don't well i mean look you can see this horrible mess that kind of happened here when I was trying to put this back together and I had to just give up it in the end but you know that's I, I don't understand I've done some stuff with it and it, it's not been too bad but I think you know it, once you've welded it you can't sort of re-weld it again so anyway what um I've been doing on it you know to try and get around that problem is I've made up a, another exhaust for it um, out of some aluminium tubing. Now this actually is a helicopter skid, believe it or not. And when it goes into the head, you can't actually see it. I don't know if you can see a little bit in there. No, I don't think you can, but... Oh yeah, there's just a little piece in there. I've actually got like an adapter from an aeroplane, which actually screws in there, and you've got like copper washers inside there. Um, so it's quite a good bolt-on kind of fit and the actual the helicopter skid actually screwed into it but I mean that bend there to get that you know it's like a sort of S shape as it goes up there that was an um, absolute nightmare I, you know I had a lot of old telescope helicopter skids and uh, I haven't got a lot left you know I was trying everything and um, I think she got this one on there um, and you know it looks quite neat I think, don't you? I think it's quite a nice sort of setup. Maybe I like it better than the, the, the you know, the big wide fat one. I think, you know, the big diameter one. I think this looks more in keeping with the bike. So, the other big headache was, which I thought was a piece of cake, was this clutch. Now, this is the reverse clutch, as you know, with the two gears on the back. Let's try and get this upside down. You can't see now because of the tank, but there you go. Two two speed gearbox, so there's two gears there, and the clutch goes round this way. Well, the problem I was having, again, all right in the dry build, but the problem I was having when I was trying to start this engine was that the end flow on the engine was too much. It was trying to, because I haven't got any ball bearings in here, I haven't got a ball race in here, I've got a plain bronze bush, there's no other way I could do it. So because I've got that, it's trying to press the crankshaft further into the engine which actually alters the valve timing 
because the cam actually runs off the crankshaft. So it's got like a worm drive on it. So that runs off of there. And what was happening, as it was pushing back, it was actually altering the timing. So I had to try and find some way, because normally it's got a prop driver on there and a propeller and it pulls it all up tight with no end flow. But I couldn't do that because I had, you know, a plain bush with a crankshaft going through it. So I had to try and work out some method of stopping any of the end flow on it. And, you know, the problem I had was if I put any spacers in there, when I put the starter on it, it kind of bound up the clutch bell and it made the clutch bell go around with the flywheel you know, really tight and really not very nice. So what I managed to do is I put some, I found some small thrust races. So what I've done now, behind the actual adapter, what bolts are flying along, I've got a thrust race. And I've made various little shims to shim the flywheel out. And with the thrust race now, as you push against it, it's lovely and smooth still. And today I've started it. Um, I put a little video on YouTube of it actually running. Um, and it starts first time now and you know it doesn't bind up because of the thrust bearing because it's quite a lot of force you have to put on that. I'm not happy with the starting system at the moment. I might make myself a little box for it but I'm just using a handheld starter. So you have to put a lot of pressure on it to start it but with a couple of thrust bearings on it now it's salted. So that's, that's good and the gear mesh is quite good on the two speed. Um, so everything there is quite good. Uh, another problem, <laughs> again, was the carburettor. Now, I've said to you before, these carburettors, they always stick out, you know, because what you've normally got, you know, if I can show you, I'll just show you my new mug that I got from Gregor, Moto Bad Shop. I ordered some tyres off him, and he sent me this through because it was my birthday. So he sent me a great little, uh, like a light pen, and he sent me this mug through. How cool is that? And I've got tea in it. So, uh, these are the tyres I bought off of Greg. They're the old super soft PNT tyres. You know, they're as sticky as a sticky thing and they're, they're beautiful tyres, you know. Not for racing, I don't suppose, but back in the day they were. But if you're in a car park flying around and you go over stones and things, it don't throw itself up in the air like you do when you run roadies, because roadies are actually solid. But you know, this is all lovely and free now. So, oh yeah, well saying, back to carburetor. Right, so, you can see where the body mounts, here, and you've got another one here, which I've had to make, because one was broken, so I've got two body mounts. Now, as you can see, I've had to get the carburetor as close to the chassis, or the frame if you like, as possible. Now to do that, I didn't want to hack the frame about. What I've done, which is kind of a bit elaborate, but I've done it now, so there's no going back. I actually machine, this is one of the heads that I machine. Now normally, you've got a flange that comes like a triangle shape on there. Now, so you're limited to having the carbon in a certain position. And you get this little plate, that went onto the flange, so you could have it that way, or I think it was that way, or, or that way. But I needed to have it sort of more of an angle, and when you start building all these plates up, it starts coming out further and further, and the engine was so far away from the frame, you know, you wouldn't get the body, body on it. So I set this up in a forward saw, um, just to, this was an old head, just to see if I could do it. So I set this one up in a forward jaw, and you can see, I managed to turn it round, and I've drilled it, just in there, so I've made myself up, where is it, I've got a flange somewhere. I made myself up this little flange, with a countersink in it, let's put it around a little way. Okay, so got a little countersink, so that goes on there, and that allows you to lose so much off, you know, I think I lost nearly five millimetre by doing away with the flange because I actually machined the head of the engine back as well. So I machined that back as well. So we've got this going further sort of that way as I could. So, you know, it does away with all these bits and pieces. So it goes on there with a little keeper screw there. So I just put some bearing fit around it, a little keeper screw there. And now I can have the carburetor 
where I want it to go. So you've got like, I mean, there's not a lot of room here. If you can see, the needle valve assembly goes up there. It just misses, you can see the gap there between the um, crash bar mount and there's a little bit of clearance between the body mount and the carburetor there. So it also got a nice straight pull on the carburetor, which is kind of, I'll show you. So, you know, we've got a lovely pull on that. We've got it working the brake as well. I've got another problem which I've got to solve is because like everything had to go backwards in the bike, you know, about to elongate the holes for the tank. This is kind of this wire here that sort of it don't really hold the tank but it supports it, is in the wrong place. And my rear brake is hitting on that wire, so I've got to do something, I've got to change that for the rear brake. But you know. That's not really a, a problem to do. So, you know, after it going together so well, uh, we ended up with, you know, a lot of these problems. Now, the other problem I had originally, I couldn't get it started because of, as I thought, the carburetor. So I've tried all these different carburetors on it. I've got I've got two of these slide carbs, which I quite like. This one is brand new, and it was just flooding the engine with fuel. It just would not fire. Um, and I also got a, a rotary carb, which I tried, and it almost ran on that, but not, not, that, not that good. So I stripped this one down, and the idle mixture screw, you've got two O-rings, big one and a smaller one, the smaller one had been cut. Obviously, when it had been put together, it, it had cut that, so that's why it was flooding. So I thought to myself, well, do I really want to put a rotary carb on it? Because the actual, you know, trying to get that to work, trying the linkage on that would be an absolute nightmare. So I thought, well, I've got a carb on that Volkswagen Beetle with a four-stroke in it, and I know that one works. And I thought, well, I'll give that a go. So. I put that on the bike and I still couldn't get it running properly. I tried, you know, everything I could do to get it running. It was just sort of backfiring and it kept blowing out the uh, carburetor. And I thought, oh, well, maybe there's something wrong with the valves, you know. But I let the valves in you know, about three times now and they were a lovely fit and the compression's good on the engine. So I checked the timing, you know, and everything as well. Well, in the end, I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm using a geared starter, which is not that fast, you know. So I thought to myself, well, I'll try my aeroplane starter, which is kind of like quite a fast starter. It's, it's only on a three-cell battery. But you know what? I put that on there, and first go, and it started. I could not believe, you know, I must have had about a day of aggro, and all it really wanted was to be spun over a little bit faster, and away she went. You had, Obviously, you have to run the bottom-end mixture a little bit lean, because with that manifold, it does sort of flood a little bit. But, you know, you run it quite um, lean on the bottom, and then... It ticks over lovely. I put the heavier flywheel on to start with, because I've got an alley one, but you know, I was messing about all day, and as soon as I put the quick start motor on it, it just fired up and uh, I turned it in and, and away she went. So, you know, it's been a lot of issues with things that I thought weren't gonna be a problem, you know. Uh, I thought it was gonna be sort of putting the engine and fitting it and meshing up the gears and all stuff like that, but that's not really been a problem. It's been things that I thought was gonna be okay, like the clutch. Because I couldn't fit ball races in and sort of lock it up, um, I've had to put thrust races in to try and take out the side play in the engine. You can't really have any sort of side play or end flow in the engine, otherwise, you know, you're in trouble. So, also what I've done, I don't know if you can, see on the front here i've put um the original disc i painted it gold um and i put the the brembo caliper and stuff on there just for show you know to make it look okay um i've got all the chrome off the rear disc because i hated that um and what i've done on the front i've got the uh novo furore brake on the front which is an absolutely wicked brake again i had to do a lot of work on that because I couldn't get the wheel far enough over to, as it is there, to the right, because the pad was holding the disc off, so the wheel wasn't running in the centre of the faults. 
So I had to machine down the brake pads. There's loads on it anyway. I've machined down the brake pads and, you know, make the spacers up and do all that thing, blah, blah. Um, so I've got that to work really well. And that's an absolutely mega brake. Um, and the car brake works nice. Rear brakes look fantastic, but like I say, I've got to rearrange that a bit because of that little uh, tank support that comes down. And the air filter. I've got a nice little air filter I've found. Um, it all goes on there nice and neat. Um, you know, I've got to make some little screws to go in here. You know, they don't do anything, but just to fill the ends of those in. Um, I've got a brand new body kit to go on it from Gregor. He had one in stock, can you believe it? So I've got a brand new uh, body to go on it, but obviously I'm going to use my basher one first, because I've got all the black paint off and... You know, it's not a fantastic body, but it'll do to get me going and, and set the thing up. So, you know, I'm quite happy with it at the moment, but there have been some trials and tribulations with it. Um, but everything else seems to have gone okay. Another thing I noticed today is when you run it, do not pick it up like this, because I've got a massive burn on my hand because of the exhaust. It absolutely gets so hot on these four strokes. So, you know, with the body on it might be right, I've got to pick it up from here or whatever, you know. But um, I did get quite a burn today off of that. So that's something I've got to look at in the future. Um, what else was there I've got to do? Oh, the little battery pack. Believe it or not, the little blue pack there, that is the original... It's actually a NICAD pack, that's how old it is. But it's charged okay, and it'll do me for the time being. Again... A bit awkward to fill it in because you know it needed to go round the other way but because i've got the two speed in there i cannot put the battery around the other way so i've had to sort it at an angle and move it up a little bit and put it you know like that but um so i've started today and uh with that exhaust you know it sounds really really nice it's got it's not loud but it's really responsive on the throttle you know i couldn't believe how responsive it was on the throttle and i've not had it change gear yet. Uh, I noticed the screws out quite a long way, so I don't want to scream it and scream it on the starter. I've got a stand that I put it on to run it up. I don't want to scream it and scream it to see if it's going to like change gear. So I think I'm going to take it over uh, where I run it, and I'm going to sort of tune the engine when you run it. I find it's best to do that so you can sort of sort the gearbox out when it's changing and you can sort the mixture out when it's running rather than just sitting and revving because they get hot you know i'm going to try not to run a fan on this like i said to you with the other video i'm trying to make this a very lightweight simple kind of bike like leave it as it is now i've trimmed all the wires down for the radio i've only got a spectrum receiver in there i don't know whether i'm going to keep that but i use my trusty old uh, 3vc um and you know I'm hoping that I'm not going to have any issues with the radio with it because I've had a well I've been working on it and then again I've had a little um, like a little glitch or something from the throttle servo. Now the throttle servo is uh, if you tie up a heavy duty one which I've never had any problem with before, but I might swap that out and uh, put a stronger one in there because you know I don't want a problem with a runaway or anything with this. So you know this is sort of where I am at the moment, guys. Um, I'm quite pleased with it, uh, although it has been an absolute pain, some of it, you know, with the heads and the trying to get it to run properly, you know, I've had to lap the valves in and, you know, the, one of the biggest headaches was that clutch with the end float, you know, you wouldn't believe the tiny little movement opens them valves, you know, but it shouldn't be open and, you know, it causes all sorts of trouble, so that is a big headache, which I've never had any other bike. And obviously the exhaust, you know, the exhaust is a nightmare. You know, I wish I could find some way of bending alley. I mean, I heat it up. I've got pipe benders of all sort of descriptions and everything. And you just cannot seem to get a fairly tight bend, you know. You have to sort of bend it and then cull it. And then you haven't got enough to go in the bender to bend it the other way. And that's so a real, it's a real headache. So, um. You know, if anyone's got any tips for bending tubing or whatever, because I'd like to go to sort of like a 10 mil. I think that's that's probably 8.5 or 9 mil. But I did have a 10 mil alley skid, but I, I messed it up when I was bending it. But um, it is such an awkward job to do, you know. So 
And also, not too happy with the steering setup on it, you know, like, I've got this, this is a Thunder Tiger, like, sort of damper come steering thing, which I'm not really happy with. It's on there. I've got, I've actually got, do you remember the gold and black Novo Ferrari ones? I think they fit them on the, um, oh, what was that other bike? The Anderson racer, motor racer. And I think even Keith Plastic started putting them on his um, KP bikes in the end. It's like, it looks like a blinking Duracell battery, the gold one. So I've got one of them. I may be able to fit it, but if I can't, I'm going to go back down the road of manual springs which you can adjust with uh, a separate steering damper I, I like that i've never had any problems with that so anyway guys i'm going to sign off now i hope you like progress so far and you know subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up or whatever you want to do and uh, i'll see you in the next one so stay safe guys